Hello world, we are live, live and in person at cemetery with a lot of people who are not live and in person. There's always a lot of people. There's a lot. <laughs> We're going to wait a minute and let some people jump on before we get going. It's turning out to be a nice day. Got yep. some cloud coverage. It's but, all right. uh, yeah, we got Krista behind me here not raining like yesterday that's why we didn't do it yesterday that's right we had to move it we moved it from yesterday our regular thursday tour around city properties to uh to today friday it's a good way to end the week good way to end the week so i'm gonna flip the camera around for a minute while we wait on some people to jump on just gonna walk us around Yeah, they're so early. You can't hardly read them. Yeah, can't hardly I mean, read it, but, um, it is, uh, it's the Randalls. Um, oh, wow. They came, they came here pretty early in Marietta's history and supposed, supposedly the second burial was one of the Randalls children, their daughter Victoria. So somewhere here, but it's the mother, a couple of children, and then the father left after the mother's dad and came back later but uh, he was an educator and big into the masons as well so nice um, i'm always uh very surprised not surprised i'm i know how smart chris is but anytime we're out here and we walk past she'll be walking along she's like oh there's so and so and they did such and such and oh there's so and so and they did this and that and uh, she has spent a lot of time researching the lives and stories of the people in the cemetery this is the one so Stone it's gorgeous. That I did use and um, gorgeous. Leela Banks Dupree and William Anderson Dupree. This is the gun collection that we have. This is oh. his parents. <laughs> this is Banks yeah. Dupree's parents. Okay, nice. Um, and when the cemetery was in disrepair um, in the late 80s, early 90s, whoever had pushed the whole cross over. Oh no! And luckily it didn't break. It just kind of went over in one piece. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. We've got a nice healthy crowd here today, Krista. Why don't you, um, that was, okay. that really wasn't part of the official tour. So no. we're going <laughs> to, we were just waiting for people to jump on. So we, uh, we're going to, um, so like before I do my tour, um, if you're not familiar with kind of how these tours started, which was five, six years ago, mm -hmm. um, I was talking to somebody and saying, I want to go do tours out at the city cemetery. Um, at that point we weren't city employees. And I said, who do I talk to at the city to be able to do that? And everybody's like, you gotta talk to Joanne Ellers. So uh, that was when I first met Joanne Ellers. Um, today's tour is dedicated to her because if you're a fan or a friend of the city of Marietta, Keep Marietta Beautiful, Kiwanis Club Marietta, uh, you know Joanne. Uh, Joanne passed away last night. Um, and so she is no longer with me to come out and talk about as she said, our people, um, which is totally true. So I'm going to keep that torch going for her and talk about the city cemetery and talk about uh, our people. And uh, I don't think we'll get to the person that was her favorite. Mm. Uh, one, because I don't know off the top of my head where she's at. Oh. Uh, um, Who is it? It is, um, if you didn't know that Joanne was born in Indiana, uh, she was. And her favorite person buried here is the young girl, Indiana Marietta. And yes, oh, the name is Indiana. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not. Uh, we need to find sure that one. Her location. Um, I can uh, direct you guys later uh, at another time. But um, but yeah, so we're going to do this tour for Joanne uh, because if I had postponed it, she would have been really, really mad at me. Uh, but we're going to go around. And a first stop is something I had promised last time to talk about and I didn't talk about it because we got uh, sidetracked by our white zinc or white uh, bronze uh, tombstone or as we found out later zinkies, mm -hmm. zinkies. zinkies. Uh, so we're going to walk just over here um, you'll hear the mowers going our great guys over at the grounds crew are, are mowing some parts of the cemetery so we'll try and uh, stay out of their way and speak and, loud and speak loud just let me know but um, I'm going to tell you the story of one leg 
we're not going to go over to the other leg because I don't know that story as well. But we're going to go over <laughs> here and talk about the leg. Okay. So, not too far. Now, you'll have to get in the front because yes. you can see it better now. All by its lonesome. All by its lonesome. So, uh, this, I know it's hard to read, but it's J.O. Kemp, uh, Masonic Symbols. And it's March 1903, and then there's a number, another symbol, but I'll explain that in a second, uh, right in the middle. So J.O. Kemp is John Kemp. Um, and the story in the newspaper from 1903 was that he was out on the Marietta Square. Again, this is a story. And in one of the shops, he met a man who was missing a leg. And John Kemp said to the to the man, I don't know how you do it. How do you live without your leg? And the man said, I just go about my day. I go about my life. I have my family. I have every, everything I need. It's okay. Well, then John leaves and he's going to head up to Ackworth to go hear the reading of his father's will. And as I always say, like any guy, he decides to wait for the train to start moving before he's going to get on the train. Because, you know, you got to test your manliness and uh -huh. strength and so he's the train's going and he gets one hand and he gets the other he gets one leg but the other one really never gets on it so he loses his balance ends up falling off the train runs over his leg crushes his leg mm. he ends up uh, getting moved to one of the doctor's offices the doctor amputates his leg john kemp survives but needs his leg to be buried so he buries it here with full Masonic honors and an, a nice image of the leg. Hopefully you guys can see that. My screen's Here's, a little rough. Here, but it's, yeah. it I, comes I think we like can see it. This. Yeah, there yeah, we go. can see it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But when John Kemp dies in 1945, he's buried with his family in Ackworth in Liberty Hill Cemetery. So his leg is here, but his body's there. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's a road trip for us, Amy. We go find John I know, Kemp's we need to find the, the rest, rest of his of body. <laughs> and also, I'm just wondering if this was a common thing because, okay, like you said, we've got our leg here, but then there's another one here on site on the, in the yeah, cemetery. there's another one um, near the Sexton's house, but that the story that I had heard from a family member, and I haven't researched it yet, is that um, I think his name is Thomas Jefferson Jackson, if I remember that correctly. Love those names. Um, and he had to have his leg amputated and when it was amputated he had it put into a child's coffin and buried in his family plot and then when he died he's buried next to his oh good so, so he was but re I don't reconnected know story so <laughs> guess we'll have to come out here again I uh, know actually rumor has it we might be uh, <laughs> we'll mm -hmm. talk about that towards the end um, so yeah we're last time we talked about the roots um, but I just wanted to go right behind. Okay. Um, it, it's kind of hard to see because that tombstone's a little uh, dirty right now. Again, I wanted to have a clean up day, but we will. We'll, we'll have one. We'll happen. have one eventually. So this is uh, the Win family plot, um, Win Street, over by the um, Marietta Middle School. Um, kind of, it runs between uh, Polk and Whitlock, and. If you don't know the name Wynn, probably the the most influential for Marietta was C.C. Wynn or Cicero Wynn, I've never mm -hmm. been there. Um, and he was mayor of Marietta during the Civil War, so in 1864, 1865. Um, if you see documentation um, about what was going to happen in Marietta's courthouses or, or courthouse or buildings around, um, and it's signed by the mayor, it's signed by C.C. Wynn. Um, so that's the one you see more often. Names. That one's a little bit harder. Yeah. I think that one's uh, John Sexton, it looks like. Uh huh. I think so. But yeah. Here's Slide. Cece right here. Annie. Mary. There's Cece. And C.H. Wynn. Very nice. I think last time, too, we went. Um, Yes. Um, but here's the other really big one. I think we kind of saw it when we saw it. That's the Zinke. Oh, yeah, there's That's our the Zinke. Zinke. We talked about that in our last tour. Yeah, we did. It's, it's, it's white bronze. 
This is a cute little guy here. That's a little one. That's a little so bitty one. So there's a little open book there. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to see if I can find the Indiana Marietta because I feel like it's one like that, but uh -huh. I can't remember off the top of my head. Boy, that one's seen better days. That one has seen better days. Hmm. Wonder who that is. Oh yeah, another great tree. Mm-hmm. Both got a few little spikes on it. I wonder if that came out of it. I no, I don't think that's been there that long. But oh, that piece. I'm yeah, sorry. that piece. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean there could be a grape under here. You know. Um, we're gonna stop right here because I. When I did a tour called, and this is how I died, we stopped here. Um, if you'll notice, the death dates are the same. Oh, yeah. So, this is... Um, Boy, Martha was quite a lot. A mother and daughter. Oh, it's a mother and daughter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I was like, that's a big age difference. Okay. Yeah. So, um, this is um, a story of why you should never ever park your car on the railroad tracks <laughs> a sense walk of theme the, with the railroads walk today. on the railroad tracks or you know mess in general with the railroad tracks um, they well it's private property so you really shouldn't be too. near them anyways right. <laughs> um, so this uh, uh, Montine and Martha were actually in a truck it was like a delivery truck uh, and their truck got stuck. You know how some of those railroad crossings can be a little high? Like, uh -huh. I think Ackworth has one of those, right? It's, Kennesaw. It, Kennesaw, thank well, you. Well, Ackworth's got some, too, but Kennesaw's got the really one. Yeah. They have stuck truck specials all the time downtown when the truck gets stuck yeah. over them. So, the truck got stuck, and train came by and, and killed mm -hmm. them both. Oh. We know... The fact is, is that while you can probably move faster over the tracks, the trains don't stop quickly. No. It takes a good, what, mile for them? No, oh, at least, it, yeah, Depending on how long the train yeah. is. And how fast it's going. And all that kind of stuff. Which they go fast through Marietta, I can tell you that much, yeah, right I, now. Yeah, for sure they have been. Um, we're going to actually just walk down over... It got kind of hot. In the yeah, sun. it did. Let's go to the shade. And actually, you know, I said that it's private property, but actually, um, I'm going to correct myself because it is... Um, state property state of georgia owns railroad tracks and csx railroad um leases that from them so technically it's it's on government property so stay off of the government property so i think actually he's over here um so in kind of the history of lemon street school one of the most well-known educators for that school was Luella Patterson, and she's actually up the hill right there. Oh, okay. But this is her there. family. Oh, we've had some. Uh -oh. I hope somebody hasn't moved, but something's Oh, moved. goodness. Something. So, yeah, this one got pulled off of The it's... Pattersons. So, yeah. this is, um, this is her husband. Okay. And then we've got the music notes, um, on it. And I need, this is what I'm asking people. Somebody play these so these notes for me so I can hear oh, the song. Oh, yeah, that would be is. cool. Let's take a look. We're going to pause here so you can see the notes to play. Pause your screens if you need to. And this one looks like it's moved over a little bit. Yeah. That's just needs to be reset. reset. And that's for John Patterson. I had the pleasure of meeting some of the Patterson descendants when I was collecting photographs for the um, Raymond Burford photograph exhibit that we have. Oh, um, okay. It's, it's up right now. You can't see it, but it's up. Yeah, we might, um, <laughs> and uh, the Patterson family could not have been kinder. And um, it was a joy to speak to them about their family members, some of whom, and including Luella, um, are buried here. Um, we can actually, one of our city trucks is right there, but that's okay. We'll, we won't move it. We'll just walk right by it. <laughs> Speaking of Raymond Burford, he is actually buried here in the cemetery. And okay. He's actually right up here. Oh, yeah. Um, so what you see kind of in this section is, again, this is a fully integrated cemetery, but we do have some areas where there's more African American burials. So this area is one of them, but it's not strictly. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I think it's more of where we just were. Okay, it's more of this area. So nice in the shade. Oh, 
Um, here he is. Right here. Um, nice. You know, um, the exhibit, if you, I, we know you can't see it, um, but we will try and figure out a way, because the pictures in our collection, the museum's collection itself, um, are not actually in the exhibit. The ones that Amy has are all crowdsourced wonderfully by so many families to allow mm -hmm. us to use just for the exhibit. Um, we'll probably, next week I'll post some of the ones from our collection so you guys can kind of see some of his work. Mm -hmm. um, and they're mainly from um, events over at Lemon Street, uh, such as the uh, hobby fair that they had, the pet parade, a lot of different things. A lot of people so, probably don't know who he was, though. Do you want to do um, that? Yeah, or? absolutely. So uh, Raymond Burford was what I would say the preeminent African-American photographer for Marietta in the mid 20th century. Um, he came here in the 1930s and um, died in 1963, but for, I would say, post, right after World War II, all the way up until uh, his death, he really was phot photographing Marietta's African-American communities. Um, it is possible that he did some stuff before that, but I haven't seen a whole lot of records. Like in the 30s, the he worked for the Atlanta Daily World That's as right. a reporter. Um, not so much a photographer for them, but more of an editorial. Um, and he reported on a lot of the kind sporting. Of a lot of the, too, yeah, right? and a lot of the community sports yeah. um, from Cobb County reporting to the Atlanta Daily World. So everybody uh, in Metro Atlanta kind of get an idea of what was going on up here. Um, and when he passed away, his wife was still alive, but they didn't have any children. And and as things happened, certain, certain, such things, when the house was getting cleaned out, uh, the negatives and all of his, a lot of his work was just tossed. Mm -hmm. um, and so the families that were kind enough to let Amy scan, um, those are every time she came back, it was like another little treasure that mm -hmm. she was bringing back. Oh yeah. And then he, and luckily for us, he did stamp a lot of his images yes. on the back. So every time I see one of those stamps, I'm like, yes. It's a little gold mine. Um, his wife is uh, not listed on any of these tombstones. Um, I'm thinking she was actually supposed to be listed right here. Okay. Because um, this is her brother. Oh, yeah. And then her parents are right uh, next okay. to her. But um, so we've since got she her was the parents. last one. I'll scoop up. Okay, that's all right. So she was the last one, um, you know. Things. Well, it's interesting. This one says father and mother. And then, okay, John and H. Then, Henry, Peggy N. Henry. And this is her again. Oh, so she has There's, two. So she has two, and it's... Born in 61. He was born in 1840, so they're both born into slavery. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, because there's no there's no death date on hers here. No, there's not. But it's none. here. So they put this up after he died, and then... Okay. And then she, for some reason, the family decided not to put her name up there. They just I, gave her a name. I would guess that when he died, they engraved for the wife, too. And it was all together. And then when Peggy died, the daughter wanted something a little bit more substantial. Hmm. So okay. They, yeah. Um, but if anybody has any other thoughts, please feel free to let us know. Uh, but if the name Henry looks familiar, uh, it's because mm -hmm. Henry Park is named after them. Uh, that might be a stop in our future. That's right. Um, it's talking about that park mm -hmm. uh, over on uh, Reynolds and Wright. Mm hmm and I love this quote because it's kind of um, goes along with what we're doing, trying to do here. It says, though she were dead, yet shall she live. And that's what we're trying to do here for all of these tours and um, research that Krista does. is just to make sure that these stories and these people, um, you know, they stay alive. They, that we don't forget. Yeah, that's how I usually, like, start the tours. There's another kind of quote that says you have three deaths. Your physical death, the, when your body is buried put into the ground and then the third death is uh when there's nobody left to tell your story kind of like coco, coco. Uh, <laughs> disney people if you didn't catch that uh, we can so make anything I, apply anything to disney yeah. so <laughs> that's that's always been my goal is to resurrect mm -hmm. these stories and these people's history all yes these people's history. so um, we're gonna go over by that other big oh i like i have not seen that one i don't think I, don't, I ne definitely haven't climbed in it like the other ones. Uh, you know. I'll hold the iPad. You can climb. <laughs> <laughs> got to be careful, too. It's not super muddy, but uh, yeah. there's a couple What's going on over here? It's kind of like an interesting oh, terrain. Here's, here's one of those. If you, didn't, uh, if you haven't seen this, this is the finger pointing upward. 
and that's to direct the soul to heaven. Um, it's we, not a middle finger. No, it's, it's not. It's index finger. <laughs> it's a pointer finger. Um, although that would be funny if somebody did have that. Um, <laughs> um, but there are some around here where the, the stone is lying flat, so the person's either pointing, the finger's pointing either east or west. Uh -huh. um, it was just easier uh, to to keep it on the ground than to, to put it back uh -huh. forwards, so back upwards. Yeah, wow, look at this tree. Mm. I mean, let's see what's and inside. Like the in there. I always love looking into, into the trees. And these are, I mean, these are just so old. There's, you know, they were around um, most certainly before the Civil War, during, maybe even during the uh, establishment of Marietta, the settlement, maybe before that, maybe Native, Native American, uh, you know, times. I don't know. This is, this is pretty old. It's pretty cool. We're wandering today, we you know. Wandering a little bit. My apologies. It's alright. We've got our had our mind on our dear friend Joanne all day and so um I knew where I wanted to go, but things got sidetracked. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Oh yay! I know who this is. Yes. So the Rogers family and I actually brought notes for this one, everybody. See, look, I was prepared. Yes. Um, Reconstruction South has kind of been my new interest. Jam? In, I'll go with jam. Your new jam? My new, and, and Marietta in particular, like, obviously. Forward. But, um... Oh, by the way, speaking of Reconstruction South, Jay Lutz is watching, so... Oh, uh, hey, Jay. This is for you. All right, here's the story. Um, so... If you've ever read Dr. Tom Scott's book, um, The Origins of Cobb County, kind of 20 centuries, it's a big, nice, thick book, blue cover. I have one sitting on my desk. I think Amy probably has one sitting at her desk, too. Mm -hmm. um, he talks pretty early on about uh, African Americans during Reconstruction and then into the 20th century, and he talks about two brothers very quickly um, named Andrew Jackson Rogers and Franklin Pierce Rogers. Again, great names. Just yes. Um, and they are two brothers who born in 1853 and 1858 respectively. I cannot find information saying that they were born into slavery, but the assumption would be that. Um, so, but I can't assume anything. Um, Andrew actually, who's the one right here, Frank does not actually have a marker. I do know he's buried in the cemetery per his death certificate, but I don't know where. I'm, I'm going to also assume here, but um, Andrew opened the first barber shop on the west side of the square with the name of the City Barber Shop. And so he and his brother, Andrew and Frank, both uh, operated it. They had advertisements starting as early as 1871. So you're talking, what, six years after the war ended? Um, and he's running his own establishment. Um, and so that, from what I've been able to gather, was actually kind of in the location where, uh, right at the corner of South Park, um, well, uh, he was first on West Park, but then moved to South Park on that corner kind of where uh, the old bank building mm -hmm. is now. Um, but their advertisement, it said, we have fitted up our shaving saloon in a neat style and keep on hand sharp razors good hair oil, clean towels, and every other requisite necessary to make our shop one of the best. Shampooing, hair cutting, dyeing of beard, shaving, and etc. all done in a pleasing and gratifying manner. Hence, with our long experience, we feel no hesitancy in promising satisfaction, thanking our patrons for past favors, and so soliciting a, co a continuance we are, respectfully, Andrew and Frank. Um, I think it's timely that we have Sorry, this stop barbershop. today that the barbershops can open up. Yay. Hey, if you're doing it in a good way, then I'm, uh, if you were curious how much it cost, hair mm -hmm. cuts were 20 cents. Um, and customers were considered a member of the shop, and, and it was men only, obviously, and they got to keep a personal mug, porcelain mug 
with his name printed on it on a shelf with their shampoo and brushes all in it. So everything Fancy. is very simple. I like that idea. I like that idea too. Um, big fan. Lenny, I think I need my own cup at your shop. Yeah. I'll probably have to go for more haircuts though. <laughs> so Andrew, the older brother, is much more of a kind of, um, I would say, more of a laid back, kind of, but Frank was deemed a pistol ball, uh, and I'm quoting there. Uh, for sure because he traded in real estate around the square all over town opened a grocery store and a drug store Next to the courthouse on the east side. Um, I don't have that picture But I did in the video we did on the courthouse in East Park Square. So right. go back and watch that um, And um, this is also a time to plug the fact that we're uploading these onto YouTube. Yes um, Who will be our 10th subscriber? What? You know you want to be the person that 10 makes this subscribers? People. Gosh we are big time we now. Are. We're fancy, um, but we're loading those. We're loading our Facebook lives over there, and we're getting into stuff in the archives of our videos and stuff too. But it, it takes some time, you know. I gotta research these people first. Um, so Frank, not only did he have the drugstore, the grocery store, he operated a uh, dance hall for the African Americans in the community. Um, and there were issues. I don't know if you've ever been to a dance hall, but it could be loud. Some people complain that the dancing is one thing and yelling and screaming is another. <laughs> true. Um, the biggest story that I found of Frank um, that I thought was really interesting was uh, he actually was able to get enough money through real estate and his other ventures to purchase a house on Atlanta Street. Oh, yeah. Just over, That's, not too far. Atlanta across. Street's right over here. Across and the, the story highway. goes um, that he was a barber worth thirteen thousand dollars owned stores and dwellings and he had uh purchased a home owned by alexander stevens dun 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 but not, not true, not true. <laughs> no 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 who oh, wait well, and for those who don't know alexander stevens was the con the vice president of the confederacy who did not hail from marietta so no yeah. never had a house in marietta no but this story became so like salacious. Northern newspapers were running about how this, how a uh, black man had bought the home of the former vice president of the Confederacy, and and the South are going, no, no, he did not. Like, so, like this was a, <laughs> another like many back and forth civil war between the newspapers of the North and South oh, talking about this. Um, so. The, the brothers are always a, a research point for me. I, I love to try and find more information. Um, I was able to find that Frank had, um, with their family's history, filled out something called um, the Guyon Miller Rolls. It's G U I O N. Somebody said it's Guyon. I don't, I don't know. I'm just going to call it Guyon because that's what the. Is it is. French? It's like, two, it's like two it's it's two names together but the idea mm. is those roles were all the way through the 18 in the 1830s trying to track uh, descendants of the Cherokee Nation mm -hmm. around here and so here's uh, Franklin Pierce Rogers his form in 1906 mm -hmm. so you can see it says his wife who his father his mother so if you're ever looking up um, potential ancestry for slave descendants, things like that. This is something really interesting to try and go through mm -hmm. um, because it'll give you a lot of slaves, former slaves, enslaved people were told that they had Cherokee ancestry. True or not, I don't know. Um, and so they would go and, and try and fill out in order to get some reimbursement from their family's move. But anybody who found out that they, or when the government found out that they had been enslaved or had enslaved people in their family they immediately crossed them out hmm. said you couldn't get any money from this but you have the information so um, those roles are very very important that's how I've been able to like track who their kids were who their parents were all this kind of stuff mm -hmm. are through those roles um, and it's helped for a lot of other african-american families within Marietta to kind of just go back and see um, who was related to who so again if you're interested in those it's the Miller guy in Miller rolls to mm -hmm. and then Miller spelled the same way. So I have a question. Yeah. So over here I'm noticing 
in memory of Emma, mm -hmm. wife of Andrew, wait a minute, there is, J. Rogers. Yes. Born in 1854, died in 1885. Yes. Then we're going to back up, dun, 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 and she got a quite a lovely monument here, yeah, I have so to say. Yeah, she's got a Beautiful. bunch of symbols. She's got a bunch of symbols. You've got symbols. the ivy, you've got the rose, you've got the scroll, you've got the broken. Let's um, say, oh, somebody else, Hattie Lou. Okay. Oh, that's a baby. 89, 1879 to 1880. Oh. So, yeah, you've kind of got a whole bunch of things, and it says her hand... There might be another one on this side. No. Maybe not. Okay, her hand carried her within... This, I don't know what that says. Gales. Within the gales. Like gales of the gates. storm. Gates. Gates. There we go. Not gales. All right. Figured within the gates. Well, that's beautiful. So I just want to point out that that's his wife, and I'm assuming his first wife. His first wife, yes. yes. Because and then, then, Bobby was then he wife, passed here in '33, yes. and then his second wife passes in 18 in 1961. Yeah. So he so, okay. After her death. But then, okay. Going back to her grave. So I think I talked about last time the 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 broken column is like the life cut short. Oh uh, yeah. The, okay. The, the ivy is to represent, I had this, friendship, fidelity, and immortality, because mm. it's a hardy evergreen leaf. Mm -hmm. It also denotes immortality, rebirth, or regeneration. Mm -hmm. um, the rose and scroll, mm -hmm. uh, it depends, but a rose um, is, in, is it in, but no, this one's more in blue. So it symbolizes love, hope, and beauty. Um, a rose bud usually indicates a, ch a child's grave. A partial bloom shows somebody who had been, died in his teen or early adult life, uh, also a life cut short. Or a full bloom signifies somebody who broke, who died in the prime of their life. So you see that too. And then the scroll work, um, imagine this as, as the birth and then the death and then the life is the middle. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Nice. So yeah, that one is another story that... Uh, we're all, but then recently, I just somebody sent me some information, and it had the brother's signatures on it. So that was like another little cool, lovely thing. Here's the Gramlings. If you've ever been on Gramling Street, that's where you get the name. This one's real pretty too. Yeah, beautiful. And then you've got, of course, the drapery, the curt, the to kind of. You've got the draping here. You've got the draping on the urn. Mm-hmm. You got the rose again. And I don't remember if we said this on our last tour or not, but um, this cemetery is technically full, right? Closed, full, or there's some spots that family members own, but they haven't used, but yes. but you can't purchase a spot here anymore. Yeah, yeah. okay. Thomas Milton Allen um, was a slave, um, an enslaved person, actually at, um, based off of Rockford, records, Rockford, um, which is the house off of, some people might refer to it as the old Manning house. Manning Circle, Manning Circle behind Marietta High School. Mm -hmm. um, so you can obviously see on his, but he mm -hmm. served, because um, you don't really get the idea here that he actually played an important part in the Reconstruction South. So I'm going to make sure I get to the right page. Mm -hmm. Very important to do. Which one is his uh, tombstone? Over here? Let's find it. Let's see. Where's he at? Oh, wait. These are towers. Those are oh, towers. Those are towers. Tower Road is named after them. Oh, Tower oh, Road. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't know why it's so far. Yeah. Okay. Here it is Alan. Yep. Georgia General Assembly Assembly in 1868, okay? Mm-hmm. Not long after. During right. the wave of African Americans being elected into public office. His seat, though, was in Jasper County, not in Marietta. Oh, okay. Um, the reason being that he had a home there as well. Those are our guys, hey, hey. Um, served on several different committees, including manufacturer banking in new counties and county lines. And then... Um, by 1870, there were steps to rule him ineligible uh, because he was
was not living in his house in Jasper, but was rather living in Atlanta. Sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. Talking about a politician not living and running, that, that, that sounds familiar. Mm. <laughs> um, but he did end up uh, just running and being in the Georgia General Assembly. Very important to note all of the African Americans post-Civil War and their role Absolutely. within local, state, national. Uh, and he actually, at, at the time of his death, lived um, over on Powder Springs Street, just about three miles south of here. Oh, okay. I, I, we'd, I'd love to do a rubbing to see what some of this yeah. stuff says. We've got this, what is that growing on it? I don't know I don't what know. it is. But Colorful. Yeah, it it's, it's pretty, but I don't Hi. like it. <laughs> They're never out here when I do tours, so it's like, <laughs> And I actually had one planned for tomorrow, but obviously that got good. <laughs> um, so, outside of being asked where Mary Fagan is buried, uh huh. Nobody seemed to ask last time oh. about the lady in black. Oh, okay, right. So why don't we go over sure, and see the lady it. in black? Let's do it's it. It's not that far. All right, nice little walk up the little incline here. So we've got some Phillips, um, not Phillips Legion, but um, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that yeah, one. It is. There's yeah. more in the other of, yeah. up on the other side of the hill too. So for Civil War buffs out there, um, Colonel Phillips was uh, well known. You know, I believe we have a book I do think uh, have written book. on his life yes. yeah, in I our gift shop. Family. When the gift shop opens, come and get it. Right, so. I'm going to go right here. We do have a marker on the lady in black. Okay. Mary Annie Gartrell. Uh oh. What do we have? An egg. What do you have? What do you have? Oh, an egg. And what does that symbolize, Krista? I don't know. I didn't fertility? Eat the eggs. Does that symbolize fertility? Yeah, I guess so. But I don't know. Is, why is it an Easter egg? It's got a little marker on it. It's got a little sticker. Or a sticker. It, oh, you can't see it. There it is. It is Easter. Yeah. Season of Easter, I okay, guess. Okay, so this is. Wow. The, Holy moly. Yeah. This is probably. Outside of Mary Fagan's grave, I would say the most asked about. Um, uh huh. It is. It is a beautiful monument. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and you've got two urns. It says "Our Annie." It was um, put this, up by the. For sister. the record, this is kind of along the lines of what I'm thinking for myself. So I'm just going to okay. put that out there. I thought you. Wanted I like this. Like well, okay, if I can't have a mausoleum, I would like or something this grand. Or do you want a mausoleum with, like, a carving of yourself on top of it, like they do No, Oakland. I like this pretty angel. She's okay. pretty. Yeah. Um, so, it says it's for, uh, Sacred to the Memory of Mary Annie, daughter of John O. and Mary W. Gartrell, uh, died in Atlanta, May 9th, 1906. She was the pride of her father and mother, the idol of her sisters and brothers, a dutiful, affectionate daughter, a loving, kind, and devoted sister, a true friend, her beautiful Christian character, her noble deeds of charity, combined with an am amiable, discreet, refined, and kind disposition. Can't put that on yours. Made by hey. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> made by her honored and loved all by the who knew her. We'll put that. None knew her but to love her. No one named her but to praise. A beautiful life which ends in and not with death. Uh, and then erected by her devoted sister, Lucy Gartrell. I have a sister. She's pretty devoted. She is. She could give me this. Yes, totally. Uh, so <laughs> if you want to, like, here's the actual, like, entrance. To the oh, we have an entrance. We need the you official. Have to name them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We have so. the. Ooh, that's a pretty shot, right? Right? There. It's just gorgeous. So we have the angel to Mary Annie. And then you have the scrolling one that says. Our Annie. Annie. Uh -huh. Our Annie. And then you've got the two urns. The egg doesn't belong here, but whatever. Yeah. It's a pretty big plot. Huge. One person. Massive. But I think there's more people. Really? I think there might be. How like, many? Probably a good number of the family because. Um, so you have Colonel John Oswald Gartrell, who marries Mary Annie Randall, not related to the ones I talked about way earlier. Um, so they have their children, Sarah, Virginia. Rufus, John, Mary Annie, Joseph, Lucy, and Ina May. Wow. Eight. 
between 1852 and 1879. The father actually served in, during the Civil War. Um, and what I found very interesting was he was described as a, quote, a man of more than ordinary weakness and frailty of physical constitution. And for several years past has continuously afflicted with the disease of the heart and chest, attended with pain in the left side, soreness of the lungs and difficulty breathing. He still labored, um, laboring under this disease, which is deemed by physicians as permanent and incurable. The disease always aggravated by, aggravated by exposure to inclement weather and anything like extra labor or exertion invariably <laughs> prostrates him. Um, this was in 1863. They had a whole bunch of kids afterwards. He didn't sound too bad. Apparently he wasn't the one doing the extra labor yeah, and exertion. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, Annie is really the, the, the motherly sister figure to Lucy, the one who um, has the monument erected. But you potentially in this plot is the mother uh, Mary, who's also a Mary Annie, this uh, brother John, brother Rufus, uh, and then the father as well. And then Lucy, the, the last remaining member of the family, is possibly here too. They just don't okay. have any markers. Well, they spent all their money on this one. I know, this was pretty expensive. For their sister. Um, that's all right. Um, so this one, the other, the story is, the reason it says Lady in Black is Lucy would come and visit from Atlanta at least once a week, dressed in black, to visit her sister. Um, this reminds me of Joanne. Uh, we would always have an argument uh -oh. about whether or not uh, Lucy's death certificate is correct. Okay. Supposedly, Lucy's death certificate says under sex male. What? Okay. So, I don't know if that is... I have not seen the actual... What did Joanne think? Um, we always kind of debated that maybe she... She, he was genetically one... But on the outside looked like another. I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. But that was always uh, the debate. <laughs> um, so she's probably mad at me right now for mentioning it, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. The lady in black could have been actually a gentleman in black. Okay. Know. Well, you know. To each their own. Well, yeah, and we we've started. We wanted to start documenting some of our our in LGBTQ. The, well, in the census history. records she is listed as female yeah but again if, if it's just based on outward appearance for census records science you know sure they just said oh yeah that's a man we'll just, yeah so okay. uh, hmm. yeah there's our, our all right hidden story on that interesting one. um so before we go um we we were asked last time about mary fagan's grave uh-huh and guess what? We're not going there today. Ah, oh, um, trick ya. I can see it through the trees yeah. along the fence line. Yep. So. Wait, wait a minute. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to see. my finger. Where's my finger? Oh, I oh. Kind of see those it's like right back brighter there. White Whee, two stones boom, and that a way. Marker there. Um, so I'm going to make a deal with everybody. Okay. Monday. Yes. This um, Monday. This Monday. Um, April 20. Seven. Sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Twenty-seven. It's April though. That's yeah, that much Monday, I know. Monday, Monday. I know it's Monday. Monday. That day. Um. So, if you are willing to put up with Amy and I again together, we are going to be road tripping it. Okay. I would just like to take this moment to to mention that. Krista declined my invitation to road trip on the Great Locomotive Chase. Yes, I did. But, I cool <laughs> but, she was co but now she has accepted the offer to... Actually, it was her idea, but still. <laughs> <laughs> she decided she wanted to do it with a different idea. Well, so. somebody, somebody said it was like watching Thelma and Louise without Louise being with Thelma. Right? And I was like, oh, I mean, my, Seriously. Well, so we are, um, we've kind of got seven stops that we're going to do. Uh, I'm not sure yet if we're going to go live at every single one or if we might just do the same. Um, yeah, I think we'll video at each stop, maybe go live at the last one to yeah, answer questions. Be, and the, 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 the topic will be um, the death of Mary Fagan and the deaths, I should say, of Mary Fagan and Leo Frank. And uh, where most of the action happened was in um, Atlanta. 
as far as Mary Fagan's death and investigation went. Yeah. And then the, um, the crimes and lynching of Leo Frank happened, of course, here in Cobb County in Marietta. So we're going to bring it back up here, back home to discuss that. So yeah. it should be an interesting day. We're going to hit some interesting spots in the city. All right, guys, sure. have an awesome weekend. Um, we will see you Monday. Um, I'm hoping we'll get the first video out by 11. Um, it just depends on what time yeah. people get to the office. <laughs> what? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> hey, you were there pretty early today. I'll give you that. I was on but time, which means I, today is really on, it all depends taking on forever. Kiddos, and I, we both get that. Um, but hopefully we'll have we're that first video out by 11. And also we won't, um, there's not as far of um, travel between the a lot of the stops in Atlanta and then back up here we don't have to travel very far so hopefully we can uh, get all those up and get everything going so hopefully we can be live not yes. at 7 30 at night yes <laughs> hey and as we before we fade out I've got to turn this back around because my sister jumped on and uh, Lauren you weren't learned. on here earlier in the film you're gonna have to go back and watch because the, this uh, here's the monument that I would like dedicated to me because this was dedicated by her loving sister so there you go. That's your task in life is to get me that. So, all right. Very important to know. <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. Bye.